The new Xbox wireless controller launching with the Xbox Series X and Series S isn't so much a next-gen controller as it is an incremental update on the one we already know. It's flush with small tweaks that improve specific elements of the Xbox experience, like recording gameplay, using the D-pad, and grip. There are no big next-gen swings here, no features designed to change the way that we play and interact with games, just a better controller than the one before. Personally, I'm fine letting Microsoft continue riffing on its highly comfortable, familiar controller design. The new Xbox wireless controller is a fairly conservative update of the Bluetooth-enabled model released midway through the Xbox One's lifespan. Small but impactful changes are geared toward optimizing the feel of the established design rather than adding new functionality. The black model, which comes packaged with the Series X, looks very similar to the Xbox One controller. Its black matte plastic shell, multicolored face buttons, and analog sticks all look and feel identical to their predecessors. Xbox veterans will have no problem finding the pairing button on top the battery plate in the back, and the two ports on the bottom, the proprietary port for connecting the Xbox chat pad and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack for wired headsets. There are a few little cosmetic flourishes, like an all black Xbox button and a matte bumper and trigger buttons that generally make the controller look a little more subtle, but only in the slightest way. The new controller measures six by four by 2.47 inches, that's width, depth, and height versus the Xbox One controller's 6x4x2.56. In other words, it's effectively identical. And weighing in at 287 grams, it's just a hair heavier than the Xbox One model's 279 grams. Both of those weights were measured with two AA batteries inside, by the way. There are three changes from the last Xbox controller to the new model that may impact how you play. The first and most obvious is the new share button in the center of the controller near the menu and view buttons. By default, pressing the button takes a screenshot and holding it starts recording a video clip. You can also swap that functionality using the accessories app. The share button makes it much easier to use the Xbox's native sharing tools on the fly. With the old controller, there's a moment of lag after pressing the Xbox button to access recording options, which makes recording feel like a bit of a hassle, and it makes it difficult to record screenshots accurately without a photo mode. I still wouldn't call using the share button the best way to record screenshots, but it does feel much more responsive and is completely painless, so I'm much more likely to snap something quick knowing that I can do it with a single press. The controller also has a new, clickier, hybrid-style directional pad that's like a mashup between the cross-shaped D-pad on the previous model and the abstract concave D-pad design of the Elite Series 2. The new version is a slightly concave circular pad with raised cardinal directions. The directionals look and feel more pronounced than on the Elite Series 2, making it easier to tell the difference between hitting a cardinal versus a diagonal. Surprisingly, the biggest change for me is in the louder, more responsive click. A full press on one of the cardinal directions elicits strong feedback that you can hear and feel. And depending on how you feel about clicky buttons, this may be either a huge upgrade or a bit of a nuisance. But as someone who frequently fudges directional presses during intense play, I found it to be helpful. The last and arguably least exciting of the gameplay-focused changes is the addition of textured grips along the controller's side handles and triggers. The mild but highly textured grip keeps the controller from moving in your hands even when they get really sweaty. The trigger grips, on the other hand, are more cosmetic than useful. I suppose that they could keep your fingers from sliding off, but how often do your fingers really slide on their own anyway? There are also two small changes around the wireless elements of the controller. As with the last controller, this one supports the Xbox wireless pairing protocol used by the Xbox One, as well as Bluetooth for easy pairing with other devices. The Bluetooth has been upgraded to Bluetooth Low Energy, which should lead to longer battery life. Although sadly, the Xbox controller continues to demand AA batteries. On the plus side, the new controller features a USB-C port rather than micro USB. We'll say it's somewhat bittersweet though, I would have preferred that Microsoft finally make the jump to an internal battery, but still using USB-C could lead to faster charging for players who buy the updated Xbox rechargeable battery kit. At the very least, you'll spend less time standing by your console fumbling to plug the controller in. Both the Xbox One and Series X generation consoles allow you to remap many, but not all, of the buttons on the new Xbox wireless controller using the Xbox Accessories app. As on the Xbox One, the app gives you a simple, clear interface for moving inputs around on the controller. You can highlight one of the customizable inputs from a menu, or simply hold the button down to highlight it for a change. On the new controller, you can't reconfigure the triggers, the Xbox button, or the menu and view buttons, and the new share button can only be assigned to a recording-related feature everything else is fair game. Perhaps most importantly, there are no new alternative features that you can map to your buttons, like opening an app. 
while it's neat that all Xbox controllers have the ability to remap most of their buttons, it's much less helpful on the standard Xbox wireless controller than it is on the Elite, where you have more inputs and more options. The moment-to-moment -moment gaming experience has not changed much from the Xbox One version of the Xbox wireless controller. It remains a responsive, comfortable way to play games. The balanced weight feels good in your hands, and thanks to the new grips, it slides around less when you hold it loosely. On the Series X and Series S, the controller takes advantage of an upgraded Xbox proprietary wireless connection. According to Microsoft, a new feature called Dynamic Latency Input pings the controller for inputs more frequently than before. In theory, this should lead to less latency and fewer mispresses. In standard gameplay testing, though, I can't say that I noticed the controller was more responsive on the Series X, though it does feel quite snappy. Playing the Xbox One version of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, I was able to make precise jumps quickly and didn't lose any inputs. Using the recording features with the share buttons is where you'll see the most noticeable change. In any game, I generally felt much more confident that I could grab a screenshot of the right moment now that I can do so with just a single push of a button. Though the new Xbox wireless controller will launch alongside the Xbox Series X and Series S and come packed in with those consoles, the controller is backwards compatible and works with the Xbox One consoles as well. In games like Rainbow Six Siege and Mortal Kombat 11, the gamepad feels just as snappy and responsive as the controllers that were made for that console, and the new controller shines in games where you rely heavily on the D-pad. The new Xbox wireless controller builds on its predecessor with some notable upgrades. It doesn't quite feel like a next-gen controller, but its changes improve it in ways that will resonate with every game you play across Xbox generations.